elaborately renovated villas and modern glass towers. Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, is booming. But behind the glittering facade, there are people who don't profit from the city's wealth. People like Minera Iskenderova and Natalia Alibekova. Until recently, the two women were neighbors living on the shore of the Caspian Sea. But their building had to make way for a prestigious new construction. They cut off our gas, electricity and water. They cut through our telephone cable. Construction workers were always burning something in the courtyard. That's how they forced us to move out. We were treated like enemies of the state. In the middle of winter, they removed the roof while we were still living there. Is that how you treat your own citizens? Minera Iskenderova moved in with some acquaintances, but she doesn't feel at home there. The government gave Minera the equivalent of 93,000 euros in compensation. That may sound like a lot of money, but Minera says her old beachfront apartment was worth twice as much. Since then, a road has been built, right below a giant flagpole. Next door, an arena called the Crystal Hall is being constructed to hold the Eurovision Song Contest. Milena and Natalia are having a hard time accepting the changes. We have lost everything. And for what? So that visitors from the West can come here and have a party? A festival was organized for them, and all that's left for us is to cry. There were numerous forced resettlements long before the pop music contest in Baku. Since 2009, 60,000 people's property has been expropriated, sometimes without warning or valid documents, say human rights activists. The authorities deny this, saying that everything is carried out in accordance with the law. That's how Abbas Aleskorov sees it too. As head of the Urban Planning Commission, he carries out President Haydar Aliyev's policy of turning Baku into a modern metropolis. Our president has a hobby. He loves urban planning. And I'm proud we have a president like him who is using the oil boom to invest in urban development. The flow of petrodollars to the authoritarian ruled country has meant lucrative commissions for architects like Nazim Viliev. He's happy about the way his hometown is changing. Of course, we want to retain historically valuable buildings. But around them, we're raising modern architecture. This is how every city develops. Take a look at London or Paris. Believ's newest project lies on the outskirts of the city of two million. A luxury hotel that the architect has worked on for six years. Azerbaijan is working to attract tourists. It wants to turn Baku into a kind of new Dubai on the Caspian Sea. But for me, every detail here is important. The whole complex is my baby. That's why I'm so happy that the hotel is finished. Nazim Veliev is proud of the new Baku. He doesn't want to hear about violations of human rights. We visited the village of Sulutapa. None of the glamour of the capital is visible here. For months, private homeowners have been battling with the Sokar State Oil Company over ownership rights to the land here. The company keeps tearing down houses, apparently without court orders. Sokar says the buildings were illegally constructed. It's dangerous to protest or report on stories like these. When newspaper reporter Idrak Abasov wanted to document the demolition, security staff from the oil company beat him senseless. There are still spatters of blood on his press vest. 
They kicked me without interruption for 15 to 20 minutes. My ribs are broken here. I still can hardly see. I was covered with bruises. I had contusions on my head. Idrak Abasov is glad that the Eurovision Song Contest is being held in Baku this year. That means the world will hear about the forced resettlements. But Minerva Iskandarova and Natalia Alibekova say the contest is out of place in Azerbaijan. If we want to be part of Europe so much, then we should live by European laws and be part of the European Union. The two women say Azerbaijan is still far removed from European values. And the magnificent new buildings in Baku can't hide that.